Hello and welcome to this episode of Superhero Ethics. Today we're doing a live recorded version of this podcast on Twitch as we talk about the last episode of Moon Knight. We're talking about Moon Knight. We may have found out today that this is season one of Moon Knight, episode six. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more with myself, Paul Hoppy, and Will Freeland. All that more after a commercial break. We have absolutely zero control over. Welcome back. My name is Matthew, they, them pronouns, and I'm your host. I'm joined as always for these uh, Moon Knight episodes. Not as always, but it, it, I want it to be always Almost. by Mr. Paul Hoppy and Mr. Will Freeland. Uh, gentlemen, how are you doing today? Good. Yeah. Yeah, good. I, 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 I lost a little blood, but, you know, it was yeah. just, gen, you know, general doctor's appointment, so no, no big deal. I thought it was a mosquito bite. Yeah, that, <laughs> that is Paul talking. Uh, and to our other guest? um i'm doing well um it's been a it's been a smooth day at work taking a nice long uh lunch break to do this pod so i can talk some marvel stuff and makes me happy sounds good sounds good well as people should have known by now but just to be very clear we have all seen uh episode six of moon knight we are going to be spoiling the heck out of it so if you've not seen it yet press pause go watch it come back uh we'll definitely have a lot to talk about so let me start just by kind of overall thoughts. What would y'all think of this episode? Well, actually, I'm going to phrase that question differently. Given what we know about the MCU and Disney, have <laughs> it finally happened? Did the, Dimsy, yeah, did the Disney MCU stick the landing? Uh, I will start with the Kansas judge, Mr. Paul Hoppy. I mean, my mom is from Kansas City, but Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. But... I was going to go like East German judge or something, but it, 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 yeah. it didn't play out. Uh, these are... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, they're good. They're good. Yeah. Um, I, I I do think that this final episode was finally a good final episode that I don't have any significant reservations about. There 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 were some things. There were some things. Yeah. You know, at one point I was like, ah, oh, here comes the big CGI battle, but like it it wasn't too much that way. And like just from a pure story standpoint, like I thought it was it was mm -hmm. satisfying. I found it satisfying. Yeah. And the one thing that felt unsatisfying, um, then there was a post credit scene. And I was like, ah, there it is. Yeah. There it yeah, is. Definitely. <laughs> uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, there is a post credit scene, which we will also be spoiling. Uh, there was also no pillar of light or energy from the sky or going up to the sky. So that, that is alone true. Yeah. is a plus. Yeah, there's more uh, like wispy energy going up to the sky, but not like a singular sky beam. Right. Uh, and to our judge from the land of the free, Mr. Will Freeland. <laughs> I liked it. It felt. I think. I think. It was a little rushed. Like there were, there were a, a handful of abilities and knowledge that I felt only could be kind of chalked up to being an avatar, mm -hmm. as opposed to just Deus Ex no uh, knowledge. Um, but other than that, I, I generally liked it. I have like some complaints, but nothing major. Yeah. I, I think I'm kind of where you two are in that. I definitely think that they have broken the streak, you know, like to me, the, the problem wasn't just that the episode, the, the finale episodes weren't perfect. It was that with a number of the shows to this point, it felt like either a, they totally broke canon or made character choices that we really hated. Or like in the case of Falcon Winter Soldier, we had I had to sort of be like, well, this is not the episode they wanted to give us, and then COVID and all that, so I'm just going to kind of headcanon it away. Or then shows like Loki, where just it was just awful, at least in my understanding. Not everyone agrees, and that's fine. Uh, and then something like Hawkeye, where it felt like, okay, well, not my favorite episode by any means, but and a lot of ridiculous fighting. Uh, the Rockefeller Center fight just made no sense, but. It was fine, and it, it did nice things with the story that I liked. And I felt like this one had – it wrapped up the story really well. It was a little more fighting than I would have liked, especially the big, like, a CGI bird fighting a CGI alligator is just not – it just doesn't do anything for me. Um, but I did think a lot of the fighting was actually really well done, especially the whole, like, Mark and Steven being able to fight in tandem. And that – to me, that felt like it wasn't a fight scene just to have a fight scene. It was a fight scene to show that the character had developed into this new way and that was being expressed in the fighting, which 
to me it makes a fight like if you're using a fight scene to advance the story in an important way i'm a lot more interested in that than just look at the cool abilities yeah i think they did that really well to me that was um kind of the highlight of the episode was that whole bit there where it didn't feel like they're like look we're developing a character while doing a fight scene it felt like they were re- they were just doing a fight scene and the whole you know cgi gods like they i th- i think actually i i like their choices where they made that the background fight like mm-hmm. you know it's right. like you could see that in the yeah. background and then in the foreground you could see you know the person versus person action and i think that played really well um when they first introduced the you know the cgi on cgi battle it's kind of like oh, okay I, I don't know and then, mm-hmm. the, then when they framed it that way i, I enjoyed it um i you know I, for a moment i was like did they just jump the hippo but like you know it, <laughs> <laughs> but th- they um you know, the way that they did integrate and go back and forth from Steven to Mark and, I mean, obviously the acting, but also just the fluidity of kind of the fighting styles and, you know, Steven kind of being like, well, if you can do that and if I'm you, then, you know, Steven suddenly is like, oh, yeah, I can I can do some of these things that I didn't know I could do, you know, and right. then um, getting Layla in there as well and, you know, having the moment of like, are you an Egyptian superhero? Yes, I am. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was awesome. cute. That, I, I enjoyed that, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, in in my head somewhere, this is kind of like Moon Knight and the Wasp a little bit, uh-huh. where it's like, <laughs> you it's know, fair. where they're like, uh, yeah, we're just we're gonna do this, but oh. but like at the end of the, the series, um, but yeah, and and then then they blacked out, and it was like, there it is, there it is, because like <laughs> earlier in the episode, Harrow had said, you know, goodbye, Mark Spector and Stephen Grant and whoever mm-hmm. else is in there. You know, right. and I think that was a really good thing to kind of just kind of like put that into the, you know, into the forefront of audience's mind. So it would be there when then they black down and like, whoa, whoa, something's definitely going on. And then right. we finally get an actual reveal in the post credit scene. So let's break it down a little bit and start going through some of the specifics. Um, and I want to start actually by Will asking you a question, because uh, Paul and I had originally invited you and Steve on to give us the comics perspective, and then had been like, well, nope, never mind. We don't want to know it. <laughs> no now the show is over. Uh, Paul, I think, yeah, well, I think we we're okay getting some of that conversation yeah. in. We're going to do, la- do a number of follow-up episodes, I'm going to tell you. We have my therapist friend uh, still recovering from COVID, so hasn't quite been able to. We're going to do a whole episode with her on DID and sort of the medical understanding and some patient understandings of this and how they feel about this show. Uh, we have a couple of guests who've been on before who are going to come on. We're going to talk about Judaism in the show and how that was represented. And we're definitely going to do an episode with both Will and Steve specifically on the comic books and this show and kind of how they related. But let me start just by asking, um, I-, I love, Paul, the way you called it, like Moon Knight and the Wasp, but Layla becoming uh, her own a- in Avatar, in this case of uh, t- t- Towerit? Tamaret or Tower, Tower, yeah. T- I, I think, think it's Tower- Towerit. Hippo lady, uh, the ta- tower red, I believe it is. Um, is that from the comics? Is that something the show came up with on its own? And if it's from the comics, does she have a name? No. Um, <laughs> well, okay. So in the comics, uh, the character's name is Marlene and not Layla. Mm-hmm. And so I think by changing the name, they're able to do, they're able to be more flexible with what they wanted to do with her character for the story. Uh, right. <clears throat> Marlene is the daughter of the archaeologist. Um, except in the comics, she was at the archaeology at at the archaeology site, mm-hmm. um, and uh, Mark saves her as opposed mm-hmm. to uh, trying to save her father. Um, and she is strictly like superhero tangent, like kind of like the Mary Jane to his Peter Parker. Got it. Okay. Never does a uh, Egyptian god uh, conversation. Mm-hmm. Never sees anything outside of Marcus being Moon Knight. Um, and yeah, th- it's. I think by changing her name, they're able to immediately go and do whatever they want to do for her story in the show, because none of that is really in the comics. Mm. So she's not like Layla Croft, Tomb Unraider. No, in the comics at all. <laughs> no. I like she's that. She's like the. She has her own life. She has. I mean, they broke up. Um, 
they yeah, but and then we find out later that they didn't and they have a child but like <laughs> <laughs> because it's, comics it's right. comics right so um no that sure dr doom is involved somehow i don't care if it's yeah. to you dr um, doom is involved le- legitimately though like raw i believe is the only other avatar we've seen in the comics we have oh, not okay. seen the whole avatar of the Enneads and yeah. liter- or Ennead, sorry or any of the other Egyptian gods just being like, hey, be my avatar. Let's have a little temporary <laughs> contract. And this whole Amit thing head. was a totally separate story. Is that correct? I'm sorry? This Amit thing wasn't a story from the comics. Yeah. Right. 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 I, now, do you want to date my avatar it's stuck in my head? Thank you for that. <laughs> um, but I have to say, it, it, you know, and again, I haven't read the comics, so maybe comic fans are, are upset about this. Um, I really like the Layla character, and I, I from what I, I think that is a really strong addition because, and I meant, you know, something that's originally written in the 70s, the representation is going to be quite what we expect today, but especially a story that is so based in Egypt and Egyptian mythology and understandings, I feel like having, like, I hadn't really been aware of how much I needed that moment of having, like, the call out of Layla being Egyptian and her now getting to be a superhero, but I really think it helped, you know, I really liked it as, and her, it didn't feel out of left field. Her character has been good at fighting. Her character has been this sort of person who, like, Kanchu might have been interested in himself. And I like the hippo goddess. Like, she's fun. She's a little ridiculous and over the top, yeah. but it's, that's kind of fun. And I, I like the whole, like, you know, she want. she seems to have such a different relationship with her avatar. She's, and, and maybe we'll find out she's terrible season two. Who the hell knows? Um, but yeah, I just, I just thought that whole scene was fun, and her costume was awesome, and her fighting style was great, and I and I, I just really liked what it added to the show. Yeah, she's basically Egyptian Falcon. Yeah, 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 that too. <laughs> yeah, I think it's true. Uh, there was but, some uh, like, sorry, go. Oh, uh, I was just gonna say there was some meme that was like spoilers from you know the last episode without context, and like. There was a white limo. There was Falcon. There was like mm-hmm. um, yeah. a couple other things. <laughs> it was like, oh, Though yeah, she okay, could probably it. sell just one of like the feathers from that thing and like buy his whole business and boat and take care of him because I think that was solid gold. <laughs> which gold is not a good metal for resisting bullets, so it's you know <laughs> magic gold. Yeah, it's a very malleable <laughs> gold, uh, uh, metal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I wonder. It makes me wonder when she pauses and says, "Yes, I am." an Egyptian superhero, it makes me wonder if she's changing her mind about the contract. It felt that way to me. Mm-hmm. Like she was kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this. <laughs> you right, know? Yeah. And like, Tamarat maybe I should have is, some power. She's kind of just like the Valkyrie of the Egyptian gods. Like, mm-hmm. quote unquote, just uh, a ferryman for lost souls and like supervises them as they weigh their scales. I I don't see that being too bad of a thing compared to being an avatar for Moon Knight or for uh for Khonshu or or Amit. Right. A god of justice and death and punishment. Yeah. Uh Paul, yeah, what about you? What did you think of the, the Layla character and uh her, her kind of transformation at the end? Yeah, it didn't feel like it was out of left field to me. Um I kind of felt like the episode might center on her for a while, what with Mark mm-hmm. being dead. Um, you know, that kind of put him out of commission a little bit, although they, you know, they did have him in the wherever, you know, he was, um, you know, I, th- I think the whole resurrection theme plays in a lot with, uh, Egyptian mythology also. Right. Um, but yeah, I was very, I was very satisfied to see her character arc kind of pay off. I don't know. I, I mean, as far as like an arc of the character. I feel like maybe it's not as much we see an arc of her character as much as like what we see of her character is an arc of sort of right. revelation, you know. Um, if it were a 10 to 13 episode season, I would have liked to see her get a lot more screen time and be mm-hmm. more central overall. I do think when you're doing six episodes, you know, and your main character is like more than one personality you right. don't necessarily have as much time. Um, and so, you know, I, I wouldn't have minded seeing more out of her. I feel like we probably will going forward. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, this felt to me like, what was it, episode two, where we were introduced to her? It was two or three, I so, yeah. even, right? I think two. And that was, like, intriguing. And I was like, oh, I want to know more about this character. And then 
we got a little bit more, but then not a lot, I think, last week, right? Um, if any. Um, and then now, oh, we did. We did. What am I talking about? But it, it feels like, I feel totally incoherent right now. Um, I liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate her as a character, and I'm looking forward to seeing more going forward. And this felt like a satisfying conclusion. Um, although we didn't see what happened to her at the end, right? Like, yeah, right. she it's was there, open. and then it's like, well, who knows? And one quick aside, by the way, the reason why I've been talking about this is season one, until very recently, um, uh, Disney had been talking about this as though it would be a single, a single series. And like that the characters might get integrated into the universe, but it was going to be a series. And they had announced a while ago when the series finale episode would air. As of a couple of days ago, they started talking about when the season finale episode would air. So it mm. doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a season two, but that seems to be leaning in that kind of direction. I got to um, say, d- can I just like rag on Disney for just like one moment? Mm-hmm. They did the same thing with Bad Batch where they weren't like saying whether it was one season or multiple seasons. And then just before the last couple episodes, they're like, it's being renewed for more seasons. It's not going to be a single season series. And like doing that here again, I don't pay attention to any of these things. So that doesn't really spoil mm-hmm. anything for me. But it's like, this is a spoiler. You know, it's like, don't do that. Stop it. Do it yeah, after you fair. air the final episode. Like, just wait. Just wait a beat, you know? And I'm sure yeah, it's fair. like some point. way of trying to maximize viewership on you know the night it comes Mm -hmm. out or whatever which is like why is that even a big deal anyway like it's gonna be there forever well i know that uh, i don't want to get too into this but i I do know that it affects the emmy nominations because limited series and repeating series have different nominations but which also anyway back to this i I think you're right i would have liked to see more of layla and i think especially if it was a longer show i would definitely want more of her I think the only reason why I'm okay with it especially is because so much of the show was specifically through Mark and, Mark and Steven's eyes. Yeah. And like we went away with that a little bit, especially with her at the end. But it, and as well as, and I think I'm just kind of realizing this now as we're talking, you know, for me, her taking on that role herself is so much about her own agency. Because for a lot of the show, it wasn't her resisting Conchu. It was Mark and then later somewhat Steven trying to keep Conchu away from her because he thought that she wouldn't, that she shouldn't become an avatar without ever telling her, without ever, right. you know, getting into this with her. And, and that to me, so her getting to not only know it, but getting to really choose to be it much more so even than Mark, because she's not on death's door. Uh, I just thought it was such, you're right. It's not, it's kind of like when more Mark is observing her growth than we, as, the, as we, as the audience getting to see it through her eyes, but it was pretty great still to see that. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, Concha was like, hey, you want to be my avatar for a minute? Like, we got to do this thing. She's like, like, "Uh, why would I do that? Exactly. Uh, No. (laughs) Thanks, but no thanks. Right, right. Um, All right. Well, let's talk about what I think after episode five was kind of our main question. It's like, okay, what happened to Steven? What happened to Mark? Um, And obviously, we got a lot of twists and turns about that story. How would you think it was handled? It was kind of frozen-y um, mm-hmm. to me in, in terms of just like, oh, we're both going to turn the sand, but then uh, the the light of the heart is going to save us both. Uh, that, that felt odd. Um, I guess there's just, <laughs> if you sit and stare at it for too long, little things start to stand out a little bit more. Like when... Both Steven and Mark were on the boat. They had two hearts, and they were weighing those. But then we got rid of one heart um, at some point, and so now we just have Mark's full heart. But now he's – I guess I guess that's the point, right, is he's now sharing his one heart with Steven, and so now they can mm-hmm. work together as opposed to two souls in one body. It is now – two minds in one body i don't know it uh, it was a little odd for me but i i I thought it was fine in the end i think from the mechanics of how the whole heart and underworld and all these things work uh, i'm not so sure but in terms of (laughs) right right exactly also like what about the third one (laughs) 
Yeah. There's mm. Jake. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> but setting that aside, in terms of just the character aspect of it, um, I really loved the idea that Mark is like, look, Stephen isn't something I need to be free from, right? Stephen yeah. is a part of me, an important and an integral part of me, and I need to... You know, I have accepted that. I've accepted him as this important part of me. And he's accepted me as this important part of him. And so there is, to me, there's this whole to seemingly like very beautiful sort of kind of coming to terms with one's whole self, right? Which obviously yeah. is more literally complicated when you have something like DID going on. But when, you know, for anyone, I, I think it can also like play as a metaphor of just like, you know, right. all the parts of ourselves are parts of ourselves. And it's like, we don't always need to like look at something and be like, I need to eradicate that. Sometimes we need to right. accept different aspects of ourselves and, and kind of integrate them. Um, but then the whole Jake thing kind of makes it all feel like, wait, wait, but what? <laughs> but like, that's uh, okay. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good way of putting it. And I, um, in my research and talking to some folks about this, one thing, one thing I understand is that for most people, both people with DID as well as the sort of current understanding of practice is that for quite some time, the goal was like get the original personality, if that's a phrase we can use, to sort of, as you say, like get rid of all the alters, to right. no longer have these alters. And that what particularly as, as patients with DID were able to more self-advocate, but also more practitioners and more understanding of it uh, advanced. And again, we're going to have a therapist on who has who has real expertise in this, who can really kind of cr put this in better terms. But that, that that today the goal is more like creating a stable system in which the different alters can coexist. Hmm. And I, I I think you're right. I think that was I, I think that is both appropriate for that specific kind of situation, but also one that all of us can relate to in terms of that like you know oh I need to like get rid of my inner child entirely. No, like still. Have some time of whimsy, be able to balance that with like the need to, you know, be an adult and stuff like that. Or, you know, your your sense of adventure versus like needing to go wash the dishes every day. Um, that's not, that can be I'm not trying to say that. You can make that adventurous. Yeah. That's very d different than DID, obviously, but, but the metaphor there. Here, I think I agree that I get stuck on, so what was actually happening on the boat? I th here's the way I can headcanon it and tell me if I'm, if I'm pushing too hard or if this makes sense. If we stick with the idea that what's happening on the boat is either A, entirely in his subconscious, or B, is something of an afterlife, but it's what he brings into it that matters, not like an, an outside uh, judging kind of a thing. Um, the way I see it is when he goes into that, on some level, Mark thinks what he needs is to be free of Stephen. That, that that's what health would look like. And so mm. he does think, I am now healthy, I am now fine, I'll miss Stephen. But that part of what it's about, especially in this episode, is him coming to realize, no, I'm not whole without Stephen. I want Stephen to be a part of me and to be a part of us and, and a part of the system. And so, like, the reason why Jake doesn't matter is because there is no sort of, like, objective thing that knows about Jake measuring his heart, even though he doesn't, it's only his own self-conscious measuring his own heart. Um, d does that make sense? Am I just pulling this all out of thin air? What, what's your thought? Checks out. Checks out. I think that's a really solid headcanon. Um, I, I yeah. felt like the show was speaking more literally <laughs> to us, you know, but yeah, uh, I think I like it better as headcanon. The whole like, afterlife thing though actually it was i was thinking about it more in this episode and i felt like it would probably bother me less in like a moon knight verse and kind of just viewing this as its own thing and it's like yeah this yeah. is just a world where the egyptian mythology is just true and you know that's what it is whereas yeah. like when you have it in the context of the entire mcu it's a little bit like hmm uh wait now like what uh but like it, it's for some reason in this episode it just it didn't like last week i was saying like it kind of i kind of felt like a little something about it but in this mm -hmm. this week i was like yeah okay um i do think that as headcanon it's probably a little more you know the thing at the end like what's up with the thing at the end where he's talking to harrow and harrow's got the blood from you know i guess the glass in his shit. i like, didn't understand that at all that, that like yeah. yeah well you got anything I didn't, okay, so I would have liked that scene more if it took place earlier in the episode. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the way, as far as like head cannon is concerned, the way I saw that's that that office with Harrow, the full psych ward, and the ocean of sand and the and the field of reeds. Those yeah. are all aspects of. Oh, like self awareness, like it's all happening in the psychic plane. Yeah. So that conversation with Harrow would have been better to me if that was also framed as Mark and Stephen finding their balance, and but like right before they actually come back to life. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. So if that room, like that, that's, um. That office with Harrow was created and influenced by Harrow getting into Mark's insecurities and um, his own self-conscious. So if that's what that is, then that scene is Mark and Steven realizing that this is all in their head and they are um, relinquishing Harrow's control and his influence in their head. Right. But the timing of the of that scene in the episode really threw it off yeah i feel like that was an editing mistake yeah and then they woke up and in the post credits harrow was actually in the ward and i didn't like that as a patient that's the thing that really threw me because like to me if you insert if you introduce the idea of a mental institution as this concept of a mental framework that exists in Stephen and Mark's mind, and then you put a character physically in one, it did look a little bit different, but it, st- it looked similar enough. Like, I feel like you need to do something to very clearly show that was one thing, this is another. Because the way they did it, it just, like, I, I loved the second half of that scene once he gets out of that and into the car. But, yeah, I, I just was very... I felt like they were trying to tell us something about, like, this is a real version of it. That was the un- unreal version. That was in someone's head version of it. Um, yeah, I-, I just felt like I needed one more part of the story to help ground that. Like, and Stephen, actually, you can maybe answer this. Uh, sorry. Will, you can maybe answer this. Part of what I got me thinking about it is I did wonder if Stephen or Mark or both of them have spent some actual time in a mental institution themselves as part of like someone recognizing they had DID or someone being concerned about them or something else. And so that's part of why his brain went there is because he has had that physical experience and maybe it was a pretty traumatic experience. Um, Is there anything in the comics, any time in the comics where they spend time, not in a like mental institute in his head, but where physically like Steven or Mark is committed? Um, Yes. in uh in his childhood when he first developed his DID he went to a um psychiatric hospital and they let him out uh when his father passed away i think and then he took that he took advantage of that opportunity to go and become a mercenary like r- run away mm, from okay. the hospital right. kind of thing um the, oh, like they let him out to go to like ship over to like the, um, I was gonna say funeral, but the uh, shiva, sh- shiva. I mean, yes. there probably was an actual funeral as well, but yes, yeah. <laughs> um, and so that is the only time that I'm aware of that Mark physically mm-hmm. spent time in a psych ward. There is a comic book story that this pulled, um, from where he was in a psychic construct of a <laughs> of a psych ward um but he got put there do you want me to go into this <laughs> was it like psylocke or what <laughs> no nah. i i said let's not go into too much detail of it because we may well have what well, a we may have it for season two but also we want to save something for when we get you and steven on all right i can give you a two sentence of synopsis of it two sentences go sounds it. good uh Konshu puts him in this mental psych ward to try to break him down so he could use his body to reincarnate himself. And they get out of it by Jake, Steven and uh, Mark 
coming to terms with each other and becoming a their full self. So like they did that sort of version oh, okay. in this show already. I see. I, I appreciate that the way you explained it. You made it sound interesting. That's one of those fra- two sentences where if you were describing it as a story to me, I would immediately be able to say that was a comic book. That is a comic <laughs> book story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, so let's talk about what happens there in terms of um, in that end credit scene. We, we not, we, we, you know, cause I, I liked that they let Harrow live. Um, I, I kind of thought Conchu was going to judge him and I appreciated Mark Steven being like, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to kill him. Um, and then of course, in this final credit scene, we get the reveal of Jake, which we should talk about in a second. But first, just in terms of Conchu, um, I thought at first that it was going to be Conchu trying to recruit Harrow back to be his avatar again. Oh, um, yeah. what, what did you all think of that? How, how that scene played out? Yeah, I, I, I thought that flashed through my mind for a good three seconds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my goodness. Also, Conchu wearing the uh, Stephen Grant the suit. suit. That was cool. And Conchu does wear that in the comics, right? He like wears the, the suit. Yeah, he has. Sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I thought he was going to recruit Harrow to be his new avatar. I was like, oh, that's okay. Yeah, we could go that direction. And then it's like, oh, wait, that's, that's Oscar Isaac there peeking through the mirror. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yep, he's shooting them. And he's, he's speaking Spanish. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but his name's Jake like Jake Lockley. what? Jake Lockley? Yeah, I was like, Lockley. I'm like, could you sound any more British than Jake Lockley? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Or like Scottish? I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because, I mean, I, I think, like, having, you know, I mean, we've talked a lot about representation, having, like, you know, Latino Jews also, right? Like, that's a thing, yeah. right? And I think a lot of thing. people, that, that's a thing that's, like, invisible to a lot of people who don't realize that's a thing. And that there are people who, who you know, are, mm-hmm. um, and, and so, you know, we have that representation here. But the fact that, that, like, ju- just... Just Jake speak like uh, okay I don't know like I'll I'll give you season two to let me to make that one make sense <laughs> like, yeah yeah it's like Jake yeah. Lockley I mean I guess that's not a thing in the comics right I mean Jake Lockley is right but oh yes he's not oh yes like, yeah I would have yeah. told you guys about Jake Lockley on right. episode one <laughs> yeah 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 that was that was the I, I felt that I felt that sort of like that there was something there. But I was like, okay, we'll we'll let it play out, and then it finally did, and I thought that was yep. satisfying. And you know, he's clearly the um, the actual stone cold killer of the you know of yep. the three. Um, it's very different. Yeah, I'm still clearly very happy working for Conchu. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think. So. Oh man. Um, I feel like it might have been a little too, like. Um, on the nose, but I feel like Conchu could have said, I release you, Mark, and Steven from your contract. Oh, right. Yeah. Because it's all the same body. Like, Steven got right. the contract because Mark did. Right. You know? So, like, I feel yeah. like there's yeah, uh, a yeah. little bit of there's... both right. sides of the coin here. Yeah, a little bit of legal finesse that could have been uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. done a bit more, for sure. Oh, well. Interesting. Yeah. No well, it leaves, it leaves a lot open for, for future things. It does. I think, and once again, I do have the same issue that I always have, which kind of related to what you were saying, Paul, about like the, the mythology of it would have made more sense. Also, just the like world-ending threats. Where is, we have a lot of heroes by now who are running around. You know, We know that we have heroes in Africa. Who are you know mm, with mm-hmm. with uh we don't know who the new Black Panther is, but presumably you know they know who that new Black Panther is, but also just Doctor Strange and, and well, and as far and, as we know, that Black Panther is still Black Panther. Like, there's right. no in-world explanation of what happened or to the Shaw, right? right? Yeah, the, but exactly. so Shuri and all them are yeah. So it yeah. just but also yeah, like you know Wong and Doctor Strange and all, lots of people are still around. Granted, they have their own movie coming out that I'm going to go see tomorrow. So maybe we'll have some. Uh, uh, I'm like current was, on Marvel stuff for like one day. <laughs> one day I get to be current. 
<laughs> I, I still believe that, like, I think the scheduling couldn't have been planned this way because or else they would have done something to mention Passover. But I will say that if somehow these characters now get integrated into uh, Doctor Strange, which is coming out literally tomorrow, that would be kind of awesome, you know, in terms of, like, getting these things to line up properly. Um, oh, like having, like, a, a reference. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know, though, and please don't make any mention of that in, like, comments because... Uh, I've intentionally not seen any spoilers or any trailers for Doctor Strange. I know Paul's done the same. Yeah, I'll be mostly. seeing it tomorrow, but Paul won't probably be seeing it until it comes out online. So I, I did see the preview for it in the frickin' end of Spider-Man No Way Home, where I'm like, this isn't an end credit scene. This is just a preview. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I happily read that that was happening. Until yeah, I no, before, yeah, good. The first time I've left before a, wow. an end credit scene. I avoided so, reading spoilers, and as, a, as such, I wasn't prepared to actually avoid the spoilers themselves. And then there's all these, you know, thumbnails for YouTube videos and like, block this channel, block that, I don't know, whatever, who cares? I don't know. I care, but I don't care that much, but I do, but whatever. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. Um, I don't have a good transition, but Manscaped, (laughs) Manscaped is kind of a cool company. Uh, I've been enjoying their products quite a lot. Um, That might be the moment we get from it. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun with the Manscaped products. Wow, that sounded real bad. I, I mean, enjoying what are you into? No kink shaming. Oh, I mean, not, yeah, well, and honestly, really here's the thing. I will say, they sent me a bunch of copy to read about how it like will affect your self-confidence. It'll affect your... I don't know if it has done the self-confidence part necessarily, but I think that I've had... You know, I'm non-binary. I've been playing with my own ideas of masculinity, to be sure. But, you know, I always thought that it was the kind of thing that was like... It, it's. You know, like, yeah, some tri- you tr- trim up, you take care of things, but, like, lotion and, like, special deodorant and all these things to, like, take care of that part of your body, as dumb as this sound, I was like, that that sounds ridiculous, you know, because, like, that's, it, I don't even know why. Um, but Because like, you, know, you were used... socially conditioned to think it was ridiculous. Yeah, that's exactly it. Toxic masculinity is a thing. Um, and I love that this product is kind of helping to challenge that. Um, again, I... It's called Manscaped because that's who mostly uses these kind of things. But for anybody who has uh, Audis downstairs, that's this is perfectly acceptable for and, and would be great for. If you've got nose hair, whatever your gender is, the nose and ear hair trimmer, uh, I've started to use that a little bit. It's been greatly helpful. Um, the boxers are, again, one of the most supportive pairs of boxer shorts I've ever owned in my life. I don't they know are what they do to like build, build something into them. Um, They're super yeah. snug, but like really soft. Right? There's like ventilation, so, so like the super snugness. <laughs> yeah, I know. Will, you've had a couple of chances to try their product. What have you found so far? Yeah, so I bought the razor, the body wash, and the boxers. I've used the body wash and the boxers. I prom- I had said last episode that I was going to shave for the fi- finale episode, and I clearly <laughs> okay. did not. So um, next time. But uh, the the shower gel body wash, not a huge fan of um, okay it's got a really strong smell that my wife is not a fan of which mm-hmm. prompts that's me very to, important uh, with these things be less inclined yeah. to use it um i mean i think it's fine but she's not a fan mm-hmm. so i won't be using that again uh but the boxers are impressive like i wear that i wore them uh going on a long walk uh i got warm and sweaty but my 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 area was just so comfy Mm -hmm. uh it's breathable it's surprisingly tight it's incredibly soft i don't it's unlike any of the pairs of boxers that i have (laughs) Mm -hmm. and but like just so everyone knows we're all kind of dancing around using certain words that's not because we're embarrassed to use those words probably a little bit because we're embarrassed to use those words but it's also because um you know to get to a wider audience there's certain amounts of like words we're not supposed to say the fact that actual physical body parts is on there is pretty dumb but there I we could, go i guess i could um, call it my web shooter I... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good that's good yeah, i like want to get that checked out um, <laughs> um yeah yeah i don't i don't know what list of words we're not supposed to say but um i did think it was funny that like not that long ago you know um Mm -hmm. you're like oh can we avoid this and that word uh, okay okay and then it's like by the way manscaped like (laughs) (laughs) sponsored but yes and then the way that um in the chat go on john go on has asked what have i walked into um you walked into the live yeah live ad read from manscaped 
Let, yeah, I, I will introduce it in case in case you came here for the poker, which um, I accidentally sent out the alert because I didn't update the alert. We were talking about Moon Knight, the final, you know, the season finale. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be again. This podcast is superhero ethics, but uh, it is sponsored uh, or so, not sponsored. Is it sponsored? I think that's the word, right? By, yeah. by Manscaped at the moment. So, um, no, it is very safe and comfortable. And, uh, you know, I don't trust many things yeah. in that region, but... In, in, um, the, in, the, in the chat, uh, oh, the person's yes. asking, does it nick? Uh, and no, I have... Uh I, I have cut myself before, and it's not pleasant, and I have had no such issues with this. Yes, I have had no injuries. I will say that this giant box, like, I just opened and found, I mean, underneath it, there's, like, a secret compartment. Literally, with the freaking newspaper, <laughs> yes. we save balls. Um, you know, cleanse, get in position, find inspiration. Like, they wrote a lot of copy here. They like, really, well, and this is a I, I whole do newspaper. Say in the chat, the, the live ad read is perhaps uh, converted a, a convert. Uh, go on, John, go on, saying sign me all up, all in. So I should mention that oh. if you go to manscaped.com and use the promo code HeroEthics, you'll get 20% off everything that's on that website. Uh, and uh, we put it in the chat, which is awesome, too. Um, <laughs> okay, and now there's poker references. With a two and seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's good products. Um, I think it's, you know, not for everybody, but if you want to check it out, you definitely should use that uh, promo code HeroFX uh, on the website manscaped.com. And the more you do that, the more it's going to also help this show to get us a lot more, uh, you know, attention and sponsorship and things like that. So let me ask, we're going to talk more about Moon Knight, but I want to ask this question first. We don't know Jake yet, but between Mark and Steven, which one is more likely to Manscaped? I'm not Mark, sure. Right? It, it, it's, it's a puzzlement. Mark, I think so. Yeah. Like I was first going to say Stephen. And I was like, you know what? I don't know. I, I think Mark. I mean, Stephen would appreciate that all of their products are vegan. And yep. in fact, where's the bag? Anyway, there's a bag. And when I came to the bottom of the box and found a bag, I was like, oh, there's like a leather bag in here or something. But it's all PVC. And, um, you know, so I think Stephen would appreciate that. But yeah, I, I do vote Mark in terms of more likely to use most of the products, I would say. Yeah, um, yeah. And I was going right. to say that if, uh, if somebody wanted a 10 on the river, then you would be happy that the dealer used these products probably. That's all. That's a, that's a very, very vague reference that you have to have watched a particular live stream <laughs> of a particular poker game, which was pretty much the best live stream poker game ever i think but yeah it was anyway. a great one yeah um all right well so so back to the actual show back to the actual um, show what i i've kind of thrown out the stuff that i really noticed what else for you two did you kind of really stood out for you about this episode that you wanted to check in on we're talking again about moon Knight. uh last episode episode six that aired last night this morning i think we covered most of the things that I wanted to talk about. I mean, like, there's obviously there's the whole Jake thing. It was interesting that like they cut out the climax of the fight scene. Like, yes, I love that. That, that I... it's a gutsy move, you know, to yeah. be like, you know what? We're not going to show you how all those people got dead. We're not going to show you like, <laughs> was there a different suit or is it still the Moon Knight suit? Like the ah. regular Moon Knight suit. <laughs> <laughs> Someone knows, but we didn't see. <laughs> I mean, Le for Layla to be like, what was that, Mark? Like, and he's like, that wasn't you, Stephen, was it? You know, not a chance, mate. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, you know, yeah. Okay, Will, <laughs> what do you think about all this? I really want to know if Jake Lockley's Moon Knight suit is the third suit that we see in the comics. Mm. Mm. Um, I'm going to guess, yes. Do you want me yes. to go into that? <laughs> as far as, I'm like, okay design? With it. Yeah, I'd say go for it. Okay, so you have your classic Moon Knight of what he was introduced as, and that was Mark's suit. And then I was excited for the eventual Mr. Knight that was in the promo, yeah. and it's the it's the like full on all white suit and just the just the mask that was uh, Steven's suit. Um, there over the last like ten ish years, <laughs> uh, there's been a third suit that he rocks that's like start with a black bodysuit uh, like spandex black spandex and then like mm -hmm. 
some basic body armor that's white okay. with a black uh, crescent moon on it and then hmm. the hood and cape. So like there's like a black and white yeah. motif as opposed to all white. Right. Um, okay. um and once and they like introduced an overt body that armor. Steve's suit, Steven's suit was Mr. Knight, I started to wonder if the third suit was going to mm. be Jake's if they ever introduced Jake. Right. So now I now I just really want to know. <laughs> That's awesome. I think That's it awesome. would be really interesting to start se- season two by showing what we didn't see in this season. Like oh, basically just seeing Jake's matchup. take on oh, what happened yeah. in this season. And then like you follow Jake in like the first episode or two. You know, and then you I mean, kind of did that for both Steven and then for Mark later. Exactly. So So kind of, you know, completing it by by Mm -hmm. giving us some, you know, Jake's take. That would be cool. And I think we could be. No, go Go ahead. I think we're pretty sure that uh, that village in episode one that was either in like Switzerland or Austria or like Bavaria was that was Jake probably. Right. Not Mark. Yeah, I think that was Jake doing all that killing. Like, I I think maybe some of these. Cause and we saw. I remember when we first got to watch Mark fight. I remember thinking, "Wait a minute, that person who like you would just sort of flash. He would be completely surrounded. You think there's no way you can get out of this, and then all of a sudden he's just surrounded by dead bodies." Mm-hmm. When I watched Mark fight, even in the suit, I was like, "This person's having a lot more trouble with human guards yeah. Yeah. than that person." And I was like, and at first I was like, "Is that inconsistent?" But now I think no. I think I think most of those flashes. Maybe some of them were Mark, but most of them were probably Jake. Yeah. Yeah. Jake might be like Conchu's uh, sixth man, like cl- uh, clutch save. Right. <laughs> I think it's true. I think yeah. it's true. Or, I mean, I think the other pos- thing is possible is, um, and again, here, this would actually be a really good thing to talk to Saren about. Um, I know it's not, my understanding is that like additional identities uh, or um, alters will continue to emerge as life goes on. And so I think it's also entirely possible that m- maybe even during the course of the show that like at first it was Mark, but then this other alters, like as Mark started to have some real questions about working with Conchu, that Jake may have evolved um, or mm-hmm. something like that. I, I don't want to speculate, but I certainly think that that's, it is entirely possible that the, the system changed either shortly before this ep- this show or during the course of this show. Yeah, or That's to me true. I think at least after Mark started working for Kanshu. You know, yeah. and maybe as a result right. of that of the trauma of like killing lots of people. <laughs> like, right. you know, like I mean, yeah. having, you know, the idea of, of Steven was to kind of break off this like have a a part of himself that didn't have to deal with the abuse from his mother, right? Right. And Jake could be like the opposite of like not having to deal with the damage that he's causing himself and to kind of have right. that sort of. Because we do I have a scene could... where he sees the people that he knows he's killed. Right. But like maybe right. there's a lot more that he doesn't yeah. know about. Right. I think it could be that. I also do think, though, that it's possible that it's um, like my interpretation, at least from episode five, was that. He, he knows enough to know that what his mother is doing to him is wrong, especially as he gets older, but that he himself does carry an awful lot of guilt about what happened to his brother. For sure. And that on some level, like one of the reasons why what his mother is doing is so abusive is because she's kind of gaslighting him into believing that maybe it's his fault. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think you're right. It could be opposites or it could be that like guilt has been a big fact. Like Stephen was there to protect him from the guilt. And then he had to kind of keep Steven safe from that. And so Jake becomes uh, important effect. From the yeah. And I will say that, like, I don't think Mark bears no responsibility for what happened. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think he should feel total responsibility or guilt. That's like crushing of, you know, right. his views itself. But like, you know, he was there and he did say, yeah, let's go. I know it's raining, whatever. Let's go. Like, right. Th- there's there's room between like zero responsibility oh you know you can't blame me at all or i shouldn't feel any guilt right. for something and like i'm totally responsible for this this is my fault like and in the same way that i'm both frustrated that i didn't get to see jake but i think it's brilliant like tv making that we didn't that's exactly now how i feel about the cave scene because mm, i feel like yeah. if we knew if we could see exactly what happened in the cave scene we could maybe get a better sense of how much is this or isn't his fault. Sure. And I'm glad we don't. Because mm. I think the whole point yeah. is it's just 
in his head, you know, it's selective memory is going to be. Right. Kind of That's how he sees it. That's how he remembers right. it. We don't know how it actually happened. Yeah, exactly. All right. I think it's probably a good place to wrap up. Any of the last things we didn't get to mention or comment on? Um, I guess I'm just excited for the next Disney show. D plus yeah. show. Kamala. Uh, I mean, the next Disney plus show is going to be uh, Obi-Wan. Uh, the Kenobi oh, show, Disney Plus. Uh, but Disney I, I know, Plus. yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, I will be doing covered. We, we're going to be doing at least one, possibly two episodes a week on Kenobi over on the Star Wars Universe podcast. Um, shameless plug. Yeah, what is the actual next? I know uh, Doctor Strange comes out it- this week, um, but after that, do we know what the next Marvel show is supposed to be? It, isn't it Miss Marvel or no? Yeah, Miss Marvel's June. June. 8th. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have something more to come out. We'll see. Yeah, that's, that's anyway, pretty soon. That's pretty soon. Uh, Will and Paul, you guys are both uh, creators, do a lot of great things. Where can people find more of your stuff? Start with Will. Oh, fuck. Start <laughs> with me. That's fine. Um, <laughs> let's see. So I have a podcast with my best buddy, uh, Steve Storman. We, it's called Hype is My Superpower. Uh, we talk about uh, comics and whatever uh, comics we've read over the last week. It's a weekly uh, podcast. Come check us out. Um, I also stream on Twitch, Silver Dreamer. Um, I build Legos and model kits and sort through my comic book collection. It's a lot of fun. It's a good time. Uh, I was listening to the most recent uh, Hype is My Superpower podcast where you're talking about your you know, Marvel tour of New York, basically. Yeah. And when you got to Rockefeller Center and we're just talking about the Lego store, I was like, Hawkeye, Hawkeye. <laughs> and I had to pause the episode and do something else. And I come back like three hours later and I put it, and you're like, and also that's where the season finale of Hawkeye was. I was like, ah, there it is. <laughs> I got you, I got like that. <laughs> but wait, the, the final battle in The Incredible Hulk, that was Times Square. I thought that was in Harlem. Do they end up in yeah, Times Square he, at some point? He specifically it's, says, like someone asked, what are you up to? And he says, I, I broke... Harlem. Yeah, I mean, I know, it's the Battle right? of Harlem, right? So, that's what Steve says. He, Steve says okay. it's Times Square, but I made it okay to be part of the tour because that's also where Amazing Spider-Man 2 happens. So, yeah, I mean, Times Square is, like, in everything somewhere. Yeah, it's yeah the, the, the first, um, the second, right, Spider-Man 2 or Spider-Man 1, I think, has a scene that is sort of in Times Square. Yeah. Um, yeah, incre- I bl- yeah, I'm pretty sure Incredible Hulk is Harlem. I just... Didn't yeah mm-hmm. okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you make uh, it Paul to yourself or because also luke cage anyway all right myself we can we can answer that later <laughs> uh yeah i i stream here on twitch very rarely as we're, we're streaming this right now um zen madman twitch.tv slash zen madman and i'm on twitter zen madman and i have a poker channel on youtube called zen madman poker um there's also a zen madman channel that might eventually have some new stuff it's got some old silly stuff um i don't know maybe it wasn't silly at the time who knows but yeah yeah zen madman all the places i do stuff Mm -hmm. and also of course a frequent guest here on superhero ethics and guest um (laughs) and i'm looking forward to doing the you know kenobi on um doing the kenobi it's it's like is it like a dance it should be a dance um on (laughs) on star wars universe podcast co-host in all but name so <laughs> permanent guest Ch- host chobin Ch- you're the chobin sure yeah <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> all right we will bring this to a conclusion anyway yeah uh my podcast you can find all of them on the ethical uh i would do this i do the star wars universe podcast uh with matt carroll over on panda vision i've been doing episodes on the orville we did all of season one and we're in the midst of doing season two because season three of the orville is coming out soon i think in june uh probably sometime this summer uh the umbrella academy and the boys will both be coming out i'll probably be covering at least one of those possibly both in partnership with all those folks sometime in there i'm gonna sleep but i'm not really sure when uh, but most importantly, on theethicalpanda.com, you can find places to be to give us lots of feedback. So uh, tell us what you think. What do you think of Mark and Steven? What do you think of Jake? What do you think of Conchu? We, we never even know you talked about the great uh, the alligator lady and all that. Um, uh, what are your thoughts? What else do you want to hear us talk about? Because we're going to do more Moon Knight coverage, uh, to be sure. Although we did record, they finally recorded the Twilight episode uh, yesterday. So that will be going up soon as well. It won't just be Moon Knight around here, but there will be a lot of Moon Knight. So theethicalpanda.com manscape.com and hero ethics not superhero ethics hero ethics to get 20 percent off thank you all so much and on behalf of myself will and paul may the fourth be with you <laughs> wow
Why? Happy Quattro de Cinco. <laughs> That's a, it's a and none of you were raised in churches, clearly, because you're supposed to say, and also with you. Oh, yeah, not, <laughs> clearly not raised in a church. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I had a tragedy today. This could go at the end or something. I, because, uh, in celebration of the end of Moon Knight, I wanted to mm-hmm. go to the, um, like the, the Egyptian vegan restaurant here in Las Vegas, and they've mm-hmm. closed. It's so oh, no. I, I wanted to get the koshari. Stephen would be so upset. Stephen would be very upset. Um, but I, they're going to have start- like a, one of those cloud kitchens or something, and maybe I can get delivery. Okay. But it was, I was I, like, what? 